sometimes one right decision, one small choice can influence your life in a big way. And sometimes our career just doesn't fit us, and a sudden change of environment can shake up things quite a bit. And today we'll talk about exactly that kind of a story. PC Cutie was always eager to compete in esports. He was a big fan of Counter-Strike and Dota 2, but his first success happened only in StarCraft 2. In 2010, the young Serbian player quickly rose up to become one of the aspiring talents in this game. Beastie Cutie was very entertaining to watch, and his playstyle included many different build orders and creative strategies. Soon he joined the best Russian team Empire, and made a name for himself by playing in weekly tournaments. At one point, he even made it to IM, one of the most prestigious tournaments in StarCraft 2. Despite his initial success, PC Cutie couldn't achieve the top level of playing StarCraft 2. He wasn't a bad player at all, but the competition was too fierce to handle. From balance issues with turn race to complete and sheer dominance of the Korean StarCraft 2 scene, it was just too difficult to make a living of StarCraft 2 unless you were really, really talented. But BC Cutie didn't give up on his dreams and kept on playing competitive StarCraft 2. He wasn't even nearly successful and his results left much to be desired, but in 2017 he opened up a YouTube channel. This was a good call, because soon the viewers discovered another side of this brilliant man and his captivating and funny content. For the next few years, BCQD would be growing his YouTube channel with less focus on esports and his pro-gaming career. It seemed like he kinda peacefully retired into being a full-time content creator, and everyone was quite happy about that. But in October 2021, a new artist game was released, and that's of course Age of Empires 4, and BCQD chose to try it and see how things are going there. He was still an active Starcraft 2 content creator, but soon the new game would completely absorb BC's passion and attention. Another good thing about Age of Empires 4, it already has a nice eSports scene in Age of Empires 2, and there were big expectations for the new title. Only two months later, BCQD announced his decision to completely drop StarCraft 2. It turned out he was actually quite unhappy with playing it for a prolonged period of time, and Age of Empires 4 felt like a breath of fresh air. So why am I not having fun playing StarCraft 2? Um, StarCraft 2 is an extremely stressful game. It over the past 11 years, it actually added a lot of stress in my life. It's not necessarily because of losses, it's the way you lose in StarCraft 2, which you all know what I mean. Uh, you know, DT running in your base, um, Protoss AoE just blasting all your units down, not paying attention to units in one second, losing the whole army to Banelings, stuff like that. It's just a very frustrating way to, lo to lose. And StarCraft 2, and a lot of StarCraft 2, you know, diehard fans will disagree with this, is, you know, 90-95% micro and macro and about 5-10% strategy. Um, this is something I've been openly vocal and critical about for the past, I don't know how many years, I think since, since Heart of the Swarm. Now everyone plays the same. Sure, there, there's a few uh, you know, outliners there, but most of the time players play the same and I think if you hide the names of the players, you would not be able to guess who's playing against who. Um, partially because the game is old, it's 11 years old, so a lot of things have been figured out, but it's a huge contributing factor is Blizzard pretty much removing certain playstyles from the game rather than nerfing units uh, and making them weaker. They would just kind of like nerf it to the point where you can't really do it. This is something we can all relate to. We all had something we had to do in life and we were kind of unsuccessful with it or just stagnant. And we only needed one thing, one momentum, one spark of a new passion to embark on a new great journey. And this is exactly what happened with Beastie Cutie. As Beastie Cutie said himself when I questioned him, StarCraft 2 players have great work and practice ethic, which eventually allows them to become the best artist players ever. Thanks to his past experience, he quickly climbed the ladder and held the first place for many months. But most importantly, he qualified for the biggest premier tournament at that time, and 4C, with a, such a large prize pool. The funny thing about that event, it was packed with ex-StarCraft 2 Pro players, and everybody, except the famous The Viper, had quite a bit of experience and success in that Blizzard game. Beastie Cute needed to beat many great players, including those who were way better than he was in StarCraft 2. But this was a different game, and a different time. After a successful group stage, Beastie Cutie faced Vortex. And even though BCQT had already defeated him before, this would be a tough battle. 
unlike our hero of the story, Vortex had far more success both in StarCraft 2 and also Heroes of the Storm. He was exceptional at every game he played. The wood line at the oh, back no. is gone, and we talked about the other wood line location in the center here. Oh. This is gonna be absolutely brutal. Looks like a masterclass from Beastie Cutie as he comes in here with the Springles, gets even trades with those. The Menid Arms are now working on them, and Vortex's army is completely cut off here behind. He's going to need to secure some wood, but he's going to need some army to do so, and it looks like he'll lose a good portion of these units. Oh, and now running into the tower pretty bad, and he can't really hit and run because once a Magno shoots, he will lose everything, and now men at arms are chasing it down. Really rough engagement, that's what we said. He didn't really have the control, he really didn't really have the vision, and he needs to make something happen. That is horrible for Vortex. He needs a miracle. Yeah, coming over, this could be the game-ending shots for Vortex. This could be the tournament-ending shots for him. Making the shots now against the crossbow, still dodging. Yeah, great dodges there from Vortex. He's trying to snipe those mangonels with the Springolds. And I think he's actually going to get one here, but the mangonels are still on the hunt. Crossbows are still on the hunt. Men at Arms are still following up. We got some Men at Arms pushing in from the cage. It looks like a lot of the villagers escaped there, and Vortex is just desperately trying to survive. He's losing more and more units, though, and he doesn't look at zero on food. For Vortex, he just doesn't have the resources to replace them. I think he's going to call the GG, and I think BC is through to the finals of N4C. Oh, baby, what a performance from BC here. Oh, look at all the idols, and Vortex knows there's nothing more he can do. Sends the last units in, villagers are going down, and BC Cutie will play against the winner of Marine Lord and Lenok later on. Big Mangano shots again, sending in the last villagers here to give it a worthy battle for a great series. And here we go with all of the villagers trying to take out that Mangano. It looked like Vortex was about to give up there, but maybe he was thinking about the pre Previous games with Beastie and a big double fist pump there from Beastie as he takes it and goes through to the finals. Huge result for him. Beastie Cutie barely managed to overcome him only to face Linux, a StarCraft 2 champion who would easily destroy our hero in that game. But the tables have turned and BC Cutie made it look like a walk in the park, leaving no chances for Linux. Oh, oh boy. That's exactly what he does. It's not looking good right now. BC Cutie coming in almost with a bit of a BM castle. I mean, he is dropping this right on the front line. A Maganel or two would have been very effective against those villagers, but now we see that uh, once again, it looks like the Rus Warrior Monk going to be falling back with that relic. Uh oh, this will be a tricky move. Low HP as well. I don't even think he can start a conversion. Springles now coming in, trying to snipe the Mangonels. Conversion pushes the villagers away. Solid Springle connections here by Lenok. Yeah, Lenok doing a pretty good job. Cleans up both of those Mangonels, but the keep does go up. And this is going to mean that it's almost impossible for Lenok to push into this position. Keep in mind, he doesn't actually have a military advantage. It's 73 versus 40. He is up against the edge of the rope right now. Is there anything he can possibly do to come back into this game, Nilo? Oh, I don't really see the options here. BC Cutie is just looking so strong, tries to pump out another trap, but instantly gets denied. Units are already there, and his economy is in shambles. Beastie looking very calm, cool, and collected. He's sitting on 85 heart rate right now. You can see the men at arms just chasing down these expensive sprinkles. The trebuchet going to begin unpacking and heading towards the uh, the. I guess the keep is probably the best place to unload, but you can see just how much damage is coming out. Springles go down. He's trying his best to heal those up, but both of them go down. There's one that's remaining. Fighting down on the farms here. Nearly, it's not looking pretty right now. Lee knocked definitely up against the ropes. Look at that. The smile has already come in for BC Cutie. He knows what's up. He will put the second keep in, and he just sees, oh God, I'm making all the right moves to finish this one off, to maybe make a 5-1 happen. Beastie is definitely looking incredibly strong, but Lee not, not the kind of guy to tap out at this point in time. You can see his heart rate starting to move up a little bit higher for Lee Nock. He's going to be trying to put down a keep of his own. At the same time, there's not enough villagers here, and they're getting completely wrecked by the army that's down there. Beastie now pushing down towards the center. The second keep goes up. More battering rams over on the right hand, left hand side, and those villagers get pulled trying to do damage, but at the same time, the boiling oil from that keep is doing so much work. Billy. So much work indeed, and those villagers have to disengage. Ram even safe. More rams being built in the back and so much blue now rolling into red space. Close to 100 population advantage. Yeah, this is not looking good for Lenok. I think this might be a good game. I suspect he's probably going to try and stay in this fight for a little bit longer. He is... Uh 
I mean, he's known as the Korean steamroller, but it definitely seems like he is out of steam right now as the head goes on the hand. A classic esports tongue out the cheek, and oh, I think he's typing in GG. It might be over, ladies and gentlemen. Good game gets called. Beastie Cutie is your victor. $100,000 N4C winner, 5 1. Congratulations. And that's what makes this story beautiful. Beastie Cutie has always been a very talented person, both with his gaming skills and YouTube content. But StarCraft 2 wasn't a proper game for him, and he struggled to unleash his energy and unravel his talent there. With Age of Empires 4, a loser became a champion. It's also impressive how he still managed to keep the daily content machine on YouTube, while also maintaining high placement on the ladder and also winning different tournaments. According to B-Security, he practiced from 8 to 12 hours per day in Age of Empires 4, and he did that because he instantly fell in love with that game. So the transition from StarCraft 2 wasn't difficult at all. That's probably because Age of Empires 4 allowed him to be more creative and the game isn't as focused on perfect mechanics as StarCraft 2. There is probably more variety in that RTS and a lot more room for experiments, especially at the time of the tournament. And it's easy to see how BCQT managed to navigate his programmer life in the new title. It just seemed to naturally fit him more than rigid StarCraft 2 meta that was common in most periods of his activity. BCQT continued to solidify his accomplishments after that tournament, and now he remains a vital part for Age of Empires 4 community. And he excels both in tournaments as well as with YouTube content. After so many years, he finally found his deserved success in esports. That's it for the story. If you enjoyed it, check out more content on my channel, and don't forget to write your suggestions for the next Age of Empires 4 videos. Have a nice day, and see you next time.